Hello and welcome to The Nurse Station. I'm Rain Mobley and today we are going to compare and contrast metabolic acidosis with metabolic alkalosis. Um, just a reminder, I do have an introduction to acid-base imbalance and also a video that compares and contrasts respiratory acidosis versus respiratory alkalosis as well as an ADG interpretation video. I truly feel that um, when this, when acid-base balance is topped, it could be very um, like your textbook has chemical equations. I just want you to have a foundational understanding of it so you can best keep your patients safe. So metabolic acidosis versus alkalosis, we are not thinking carbon dioxide or the lungs, right? If our lungs were affected, we would be thinking respiratory acidosis versus alkalosis. And in my video on that, of course, respiratory acidosis, for instance, can lead to metabolic acidosis if untreated and the patient gets critically ill or further critically ill. But I don't want y'all to think about the lungs with this. With metabolic disorders, I want you, of course, we have to focus on the pH, right? We know our normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45. The lower the pH gets, the more acidic the patient is. The higher the pH gets, the more alkalotic the patient is. So for metabolic acidosis, they're getting acidic. So the pH will be less than 7.35. And we're going to focus on bicarb. Bicarb is a base. So normal bicarb levels are 22 to 26. If we're in an acidic state, we have lost our base. So that's why you see our base is low in metabolic acidosis. And in terms of potassium, this is something you might just need to memorize. I do explain and show the shifting of hydrogen ion and potassium in and out of the cell with my introduction video. But in acidosis, you traditionally have hyperkalemia. In alkalosis, you traditionally have hypokalemia. How you're going to remember this is alkalo. Low has hypokalemia, so alkalosis, think low potassium, okay? Acidosis, you traditionally have high potassium, all right? So what body systems are we going to think about with these disorders? And the first one that should always pop to your head is kidneys, okay? Kidneys, and I'll explain why in just a second. So I put this box down here, and this is just general knowledge. It's not just for this side. I want you to think, our kidneys control acid and base. Your kidneys, right, they help excrete toxins from your body. Well, your kidneys specifically pee off hydrogen ion. Hydrogen ion is an acid, so it helps get rid of acid from the body. And your kidneys also have a role in reabsorbing base your kidneys can regenerate or reabsorb bicarbonate, which is a base, okay? So that's just a general rule I want you to remember. So your kidneys absolutely can affect both your metabolic acidosis and alkalosis when we get to that. The other system I want you to think of is GI. And I put another little kind of universal information you need to know over here. Your stomach content is highly acidic. So anything that, for instance, makes us lose that highly acidic content can lead to an alkalotic state. I'll give you an example of vomiting. If you're vomiting, you are losing acid in your stomach content. When you lose acid, it could lead to an alkalotic or basic state. Now, your intestines are not nearly as acidic as your stomach. The acids in your intestines are much weaker and much more diluted. So when you think of intestines or your lower GI tract, I want you to think of more alkalotic. So for instance, when you have diarrhea, I want you to think you're losing base. So when you lose base, that could cause an acid-base imbalance. So I want you to remember these two general rules, okay? Now, of course, this isn't a body system, but I need you to know Metabolic acidosis, you need to think any disorder that can increase acid in your blood, okay? So, for instance, ketones is an acid. Lactic acid is an acid. So, a lot of disease processes can affect that and increase those levels in your blood. 
So I started with a couple causes, and mind you, you have many more, but these are very basic and, and you should really understand. Kidney failure, literally your kidneys have failed. So it is leading to metabolic acidosis because remember your general rule, your kidneys help pee off acid. In kidney failure, is your kidneys able to produce urine and excrete urine traditionally? No, right? The kidneys have failed. So you are now retaining those toxins. You are retaining your acid. So in kidney failure, you are not peeing off hydrogen ion, which is an acid. You are holding on to it. So you're holding on to acid leading to an acidic state, okay? Diarrhea. We already talked about diarrhea. Your intestines are more alkalotic. They have more base. So when you have diarrhea, you are losing base. If you lose base in your body, aren't you at, or, or, if you're losing, right, your base, isn't it leading to an acidic state, right? We have to have a balance. What about increased ketones? We know ketones are an acid. When you think about increased ketones, you should always think about DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. Tr traditionally, patients in DKA are in a metabolic acidosis state because of all the acid now in our serum blood or in, in our blood. Okay, so DKA. What about any disease process that increases lactic acid in our blood? There's so many heart attack, heart failure. I always like to think of septic shock, and that's what I'm going to use. Remember, one of the lab values we always want to know, right, is what is the amount of lactic acid in the body in septic shock? So these are just examples of causes and why. So let's talk about how the body copes, because it's important to know your body will fight for you, right? Your patient's body will fight for them in acute conditions. And this is just one example of how your body copes in this metabolic acidic state. So let's think about what our lungs control. Our lungs do control CO2, carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide is an acid. So when our body is in trouble, when we are in metabolic acidosis, your body can cope and try to help you by blowing off acid, okay? By blowing off that CO2. So think a coping mechanism that your body does to try to assist you in metabolic acidosis is hyperventilation. And you're blowing off acid because you're in an acidic state. This is very important. I'll give you an example with DKA. Do y'all remember that specific type of breathing you can see? Kuzmals. Kuzmals is actually a coping mechanism. Okay, I want y'all to look up a YouTube video of Kuzma's respirations. For instance, a child that is insulin dependent in DKA, they can present in the emergency department with that very deep, labored, rapid breathing. <sighs> and literally their body is trying to help them blow off excess acid. So I just want you to think your body can cope and help you in this state as well. So your primary treatment is to treat the trigger, treat the issue. So for instance, in kidney failure, these patients might have to receive dialysis. What about diarrhea? We can give them antidiarrheals. We want to stop them from losing that base, okay? From losing too much base in their body. Uh, DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. One of our primary treatments, of course, is fluid administration and insulin administration, right? What about increased lactic acid? Well, let's think about our trigger for septic shock. Again, don't we do massive fluid resuscitation? Don't we start a broad spectrum antibiotic quickly to try to treat whatever source of infection is causing this? So your primary treatment is to treat the trigger. I am gonna say we can administer sodium bicarbonate to try to assist in this acidic state. Uh, this is available in the oral and IV form, but done cautiously, okay? Your, your primary treatment is to treat the trigger first, okay? So let's move over to metabolic alkalosis. So we are in an alkalotic state. We have too much base in our body. So our pH is getting higher than 7.45. I do wanna say y'all, um, if the ABG 
interpretation is fully compensated, it doesn't exactly meet these. Remember, if it's fully compensated, the pH has gone back to normal. But remember, I'm just giving you a foundational understanding of these disorders. Your bicarb, your bicarb is a base. So in metabolic alkalosis, we have too much base in our body. So that's why your bicarb is more than normal, right? Normal bicarb levels are 22 to 26. So we're getting excessive base in our body. Again, I want you to remember alkalosis, low potassium, hypokalemia. What priority body systems are you thinking of? The exact same. We have to think about our kidneys, our GI tract as, as, a, term, as a potential causes of the disorder. And instead of increased acid in the body, I want you to think about anything that could increase base in our body. Okay. So let's look at potential causes. Diuretics. Think about, again, your general rule of what your kidney does. If your kidneys pee off hydrogen ion, hydrogen ion is an acid, right? If we are given a diuretic and now we are peeing off too much acid, right? Too much hydrogen ion. Isn't that going to lead to an alkalotic state? The diuretics I more so want you to think about are your thiazide and your loop diuretics because they more so target hydrogen ion. And now look, we can lose too much stomach acid. Our stomach contents are much more acidic than our intestinal contents, right? So you're vomiting. You can vomit and vomit off too much acid. What about NG suction? The, the suction can be pulling out too much acid stomach content, leading to an alkalotic state. Excessive alkali in ingestion, or I think any products, anything that we ingest that increases base in our body, gets rid of too much acid or increases too much base. Think back to pharmacology, something you should always think about, antacids, right? Antacids can create too much base in our body, leading to metabolic alkalosis. So, just the same coping mechanism, your lungs control CO2. So when your body gets in trouble, when it starts, when that pH starts to go high and the bicarb starts to go high, your buffer system kicks in, which I'm not talking about here, but then your lungs kick in, right? And your lungs control CO2, which again is an acid. So your body can help by trying to hold on to acid in this alkalotic state. So you're going to think hypoventilation. My body is going to try to cope and hold on to the acid in the form of carbon dioxide. So it's going to trigger your body to slow respirations. And then just like metabolic acidosis, your primary treatment is to treat your trigger. So let's think. We should stop the diuretic administration. Vomiting. We could give an antiemetic. We could stop the continuous NG wall suction. Um, we could stop the excessive ingestion of alkali products, okay? So I hope this helps. I know this can be such a confusing topic, but remember, just keep it basic, okay? Always compare and contrast disorders that you can, and you can see they, they are pretty much opposite of one another, which is a nice way to remember it. So as always, we are better together. If this helped you, try to help someone else. Take care.